Praise the Lord. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Even though we're not, as I've uh, been kind of repetitively saying, uh, even though we're not here together, we are moving closer to being together again. And so uh, I'm excited about that, but also very cautious uh, about doing so uh, because we do not want anyone to uh, contract this virus. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody remains safe, uh, but we do want to move toward being in the house of the Lord because I, I love the fellowship. I love to be together uh, and be able to shake hands once again and hug necks and uh, also just to have uh, that uh, camaraderie of uh, being around one another, laughing, joking, telling stories, and all those different things. So we miss you. Uh, I, I do want to echo the words of my wife, and she uh, said earlier uh, this week, or actually yesterday, uh, that we do want to thank you for those of you that participated in the, uh, the parade uh, that came through uh, to show the appreciation to our staff. I can't say enough how proud I am of our staff, our praise and worship team, our workers. Uh, Brother Isaac, who comes and films me, who takes time out of his schedule to do so. Uh, and so we, we just praise the Lord for them and thank for Brother Mark and uh, working uh, so tirelessly on these videos for our children to make them exciting uh, so that they can uh, enjoy them and kind of captivate them and keep them interested because uh, you know how hard that can be. But I also want to give a shout out to all of you that are parents that are doing the homeschool schooling thing. Uh, I've been reading some of the comments on Facebook of those struggles that you're having, but you continue to do that. Uh, continue to lead them and do the best that you can do, and the Lord will bless you for it, and they will thank you for it later. Uh, I do want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. I also want you to, uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer, I want you to remember uh, Carolyn Radcliffe. She will be having a uh, catheterization in the morning. Uh, no one can go. I don't even believe her husband can go. And so we need to lift her up in prayer. Also, I want you to remember a pastor on our district. Uh, pastor Chuck Cribb's wife was taking the MUSC last night. I uh, spoke with him at, uh, at last at maybe about 1.30 in the morning. And he told me they were still doing tests. That he hadn't the results yet. Uh, so it's lift them up in prayer. Maybe if you've got a need, if you will, right there where you're at, just kind of slip your hand up. Uh, the Lord sees that hand and the Lord knows. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for, Lord, how that you're using technology to reach out to your people. We thank you for these, our workers and our staff that are, are tirelessly working alongside with us to make sure that we can reach every person. Lord, we thank you because we know that you are God. And we know that, Lord, even though this thing keeps prolonging, this pandemic seems to prolong itself, we know that, Lord, there is a purpose in everything, and you will bring the good out of it all. Lord, we pray for these families. Lord, we pray for our Pastor Chuck Cribb, Lord, his wife. We pray that you would minister to her, Lord, that you're able to heal her. Lord, you know exactly what's going on with her. We know that, Lord, that you're able to take care of her and bring her through this. Lord, we ask that, Lord, that you would touch Sister Carolyn, Lord, that you would minister to her. And, Lord, bring her through the Lord, that there would be no blockages. And even if there is a blockage, Lord, we know that you can heal it through medicine or you can speak to that blockage and it be gone. Lord, we thank you for all the hands that were raised in living rooms. We thank you for those that will be raised later. We know that, Lord, every time that we call upon your name, that you hear and you answer prayer. Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do today in this service. I thank you for what I believe that you have placed in my spirit. And Lord, that we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad because we know that you are with us and not against us. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory in Jesus name. Amen and amen.
I do want to continue to applaud you on how you are giving. Uh, continue to use the giving app. Uh, many of you have found that uh, it's very easy to do, and so we applaud you for doing that. But in the Lord, uh, more than that, the Lord will reward you for how you're giving. I do ask that you would continue to do so as we move forward. Uh, you don't have to go back to putting your ties in an envelope anymore. You could actually do it online. Uh, I think uh, Brother Jimmy is kind of liking this a little bit uh, of having it all right there before him uh, that he could carry it around with him wherever he wants to go and so I'm excited about it and other things that we've got coming up that when we get back together uh, we're going to we're going to go full speed the Lord is going to bless us and carry us through the Lord dropped something in my spirit that uh, I want to preach to you today I really believe that we're going to experience such a great and mighty revival. Now, I don't want a revival of just shouting and praising, and then once an evangelist is gone, uh, or once the services have ended, I don't want there to be just a shouting, and then when it's over, then uh, revival ends. I believe that this last day's revival, and that's what I'm, in, I'm calling it, is a last day's revival, because I believe through this pandemic, God is setting us up for something mighty that he is about to do in the church and I really believe there's going to come an empowerment to the church that we've never seen before I believe that there is going to be uh, uh, such a revival that will sweep the land that God is going to empower his people to be who we need to be when we need to be that and so I really am really excited about this message this morning if you have your Bible I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 1 and then we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria and all the uttermost part of the earth. And then we find that in Acts chapter 2 and down to verse 1 it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tones like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to talk to you this morning about the Holy Spirit baptism, but I want to entitle this to the empowerment, the empowerment. You see, down through the years, hundreds of millions of people today have experienced the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The last days, and that's what I'm entitling it, this last days outpouring I truly believe will surpass that of the early Protestant uh, uh, Reformation and will therefore touch all levels of society all over the world. I really believe that. With this statement in mind, I do believe, therefore, there will be rising questions. For not everybody understands the outpouring of the Spirit. Not everybody understands what the baptism of the Holy Ghost really is. And then when those questions arise, we have to understand that when they arise, we can answer each and every one of them by searching the Scripture. By looking at validated experience that occurred throughout the whole scripture or the biblical picture, we can draw that, uh, that when one receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they can base that experience upon the experiences in the Bible. Therefore, we understand that there are signs, but let me say to you, there are signs but not only tongues are signs, but there is an empowerment that comes when the Holy Ghost comes inside of you. And that empowerment's what I want to talk about. Acts chapter 1, we understand that Luke is writing and he's, he's telling his fellow laborer uh, that 
what Jesus began both to teach. And we pick it up in verse 2. And he said, Until the day that when he was taken up after through the Holy Ghost was given commandments unto apostles and he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself, Jesus showed himself alive in his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, they commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he saith, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, come together, they asked him, they said, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season. Jesus wouldn't be rude there. He was bringing their focus in. He said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons where the Father had put in his own power, but he said, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I want to tell you that before we see the empowerment, we must see the condition that the disciples were in. Before the disciples, we would look and we would find them as they were bewildered disciples. They were desperately trying to comprehend the events of the past week. There, there were when they uh, looked at this, they saw that Jesus was arrested. They, Peter followed closely behind and later we would find that John that was there at the cross when Jesus was crucified and maybe others were there also the Bible doesn't record but before they could even console themselves over the events that had just taken place and they had lost their master and their master had been crucified and, and now he was laid in a tomb there in a room. They're uh, afraid. They don't know what's going to happen next. And all of a sudden, someone knocks at the door and says, he is arisen. He is alive. He is no longer in the tomb. And the excitement, the, the grief turns to excitement, but then there also was doubt among them of, of the events that were taking place. So they're still uh, bewildered. They're still desperately trying to comprehend the events, if you understand what happened. And then all of a sudden, here comes Jesus, and he appears. Uh, appears to them many times he pops up in the room and he shows himself he, he he shows up again and shows himself to Thomas and tells Thomas to to, to look at his hands and thrust his uh, hands in or look at his hands and feet and thrust your hand into my side and be not doubtful but believe and and all these events are taking place and then Jesus leads them out to a mountain and and Luke records course that Jesus was telling them don't depart from Jerusalem don't run scared don't don't take off anywhere because there's something hallelujah that is about to happen may I tell you right now that we don't need to be running scared right now there's something in the spiritual hallelujah that is about to happen there's something spiritual it is about to take place like we have never seen I feel the Holy Ghost of God there's something that's about to take place that we have never seen before. I believe there's going to become an empowerment as they were pondering their, the, the, in their minds and all of a sudden Jesus tells them, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is coming upon you and you're going to be witnesses and I, and I can almost believe uh, uh, Brother Isaac as they were looking around at one another they were saying I, I don't understand and uh, how are we going to be witnesses uh, we're just lowly fishermen how are, how are we going to be successful how are we going to be those witnesses but Jesus is telling them that the power is going to come upon you there's going to be an empowerment and it's going to be released in you and then and all of a sudden, Jesus begins to ascend up. He begins to go up, and the angel said in verse 11, Ye men of Galilee, why stand here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken from you into heaven, so shall come in like manner as you have seen him 
go into heaven. The angel spoke of his ascension, but he also was speaking of his return. Then they, in the midst of these events, standing there as their master has ascended, their angels are standing here recording the words of his ascension and his descension coming back in the rapture. And then all of a sudden they begin to remember I don't know who it was It may have recalled it, but they said, you remember what the master said? The master said, go back to Jerusalem and tarry there. Don't, don't leave Jerusalem, but tarry there until you're endued with power. Again, I must tell you that really to see the empowerment, we must see what condition they were in. After all, they were, have watched him die. They have watched him rise from the dead. Now they have watched him ascend. But I still believe within my heart it really hasn't sunk in. So they're still bewildered. They're still powerless. They're still afraid. And even now they are leaderless. They have no leader. And even more as once the multitude had, had followed Jesus uh, is now down to 120. But what happened next uh, is, is so profound is they begin to have a 10 day prayer meeting hallelujah 10 days they assembled themselves in an upper room and they prayed for the promise of the father the result was that in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 we read on the day of Pentecost that when it was fully come that they were all in one place in one accord and suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all say that with me they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance you see the Holy Ghost had fell on them supernatural power was released it was not only tongues and languages it was also tongues in heavenly language. But more than that, there was empowerment. Let me show this to you. The once bewildered, the powerless, afraid, now stood proclaiming Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the Son of the living God with great boldness that they spoke. We find it in Acts chapter 2 that Peter just as a, was a fisherman now stands and delivers one of the sermons of all sermons and all of a sudden 3,000 people get saved. He was not in a theological seminary. He was not uh, trained up. He, he was not uh, set in order to, how to, to be a, a great oracle speaker. He was just a fisherman. But when, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost came upon him, he was changed. He become a preacher of the gospel. We find it in Acts 7 that Stephen proclaims Jesus in the midst of about being stoned. He's standing with a crowd that is not applauding him. They got rocks in their hand and Stephen, hallelujah, is still preaching Jesus. Even though we're in a pandemic, even though we're in a place of transition, I want to tell you something. We he cannot stop preaching Jesus. Hallelujah. Not only with great boldness, but with, with an, an appreciation for God's word. They were, it was an empowerment. The word of God had now come alive to them. The, the Acts uh, 2 and 42 says, And they continually steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's not just a merely of you speaking in tongues, and I am not belittling that in any way. But what I am telling you is this, that when... When you receive the empowerment, you have great boldness to talk about Jesus, but you will find that the word of God will come alive to you like never before. Number three, there was an intense joy. Now all these bewildered 120 that were sitting in the upper room and, and they were all defeated now are so filled with joy that they can't even contain themselves. Uh, that Acts 2 and 46 says, And they continually daily on, in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and, and singleness of heart. They were so uh, empowered and so uh, intense 
intense joy, unspeakable and full of glory, that they were going from house to house proclaiming that Jesus is alive. I know right now we can't go to house to house. It wouldn't be sensible to do so. But I can tell you that you can get on Facebook you can get on the messenger and you can proclaim Jesus Christ. The good thing is that those that want to listen will listen and those that don't, they will cut you off. But I want to tell you something that we are to be intensely joy. I don't know why this pandemic came. I don't know why God is using this to do what he's doing. But I will tell you this. Uh, it has not stole my joy. It has not stole my victory. It, it will not defeat me. It will not break me down. Because I don't live by my circumstances. I live by the joy that I have in the Lord. Oh, can somebody say amen. Number four, there was a faithfulness that was imparted to them through the empowerment that to eat other acts 2 and 45 and they sold their possessions and their goods and parted them to all men as every man had need they were so much faithfulness to one another they said if brother if you need it I'll give it to you brother it's the old saying is he'll give you the shirt off of his back it was coming to their lives because the joy the boldness the, the, it was so intense the empowerment was so much that they wanted to do something for one another another hallelujah the empowerment brought supernatural demonstrations the holy spirit baptism is not just a statement listen to me it's not just a statement of intellectual assent in other words it's not something you just break uh brag on because you can say that you have the holy ghost but with every experience there will be a supernatural evidence there's many people that talk about having the Holy Ghost, but will go out and I don't want to be mean here, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. That will go out and tear other people down. There are those that are, say they feel with the Holy Ghost that will run their pastors down or run other church members down. There are busy bodies in the church. But I want to tell you that when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's an intense joy and there's a faithfulness to one another that you don't want to tear one another down. You want to bear one another's burdens. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, the people of Jerusalem witnessed the supernatural display. They were amazed at, as they heard these unlearned disciples, these fishermen and this tax collector that were now speaking in languages that they had never learned before. Supernatural demonstration. It was so powerful that in Acts chapter 8, the sorcerer Simeon, he saw how that by laying on the hands that Paul would lay on hands or laying on hands of the disciples, let me get it right, that they would uh, the Spirit uh, would come upon them. They would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and it would change them. And he presumed uh, that he could make money off of this. He thought that, okay, this is something we can sell or, or this is something I can uh, benefit by. But I want to tell you, money can't buy the Holy Ghost. You'll good works can't buy the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is not something that you want to parade around and, and act like you're just doing it just to be boastful. The Holy Ghost is for empowerment, for witnessing and working for God. In Acts chapter 10 it tells of Cornelius and his household receiving the same Holy Ghost experience as the disciples did and he was a Gentile. I want to tell you something. This was right after Paul had received the the Holy Ghost and I want to tell you that Peter was sitting on a rooftop and God I don't want to be long winded today I just feel this in my spirit that Peter was up on the rooftop and, and as he was up on top of the roof God said, let down meat to him and he said rise and eat he said no I'm not going to eat and, and, and he kept arguing with the Lord but the Lord was saying I am no respect for a person any who will ever call on my name hallelujah they can be saved and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost that's what I'm trying to tell you today if you will call on his name you can have the same hallelujah empowerment that everybody else has hallelujah in Acts chapter 9 19, Paul even asked the disciples at Ephesus if they had received the Holy Ghost. This was 25 years after Pentecost. 20, now let that sit in. 
25 years after Pentecost. So I want to cut those naysayers off out there because some of them say that it was only for the disciples uh, that were in the upper room. Uh, the Holy Ghost baptism was only for those disciples. Well, I've just read to you about Acts chapter 10. I've just read to you out of Acts 19 that it was 25 years later. And we have, listen, there is no time limitation on God. The Holy Ghost is Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are the Trinity. They are God in one. And I want to tell you, God is not limited, hallelujah, by time or space. Therefore, throughout the Acts of the Apostles, the uh, Holy Ghost baptism occurred. But I'll tell you that throughout history... Holy Ghost baptism is still occurring, Acts 2 and 39. This is why it happens. He said, for listen, for the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. Hallelujah. You are a candidate if you are saved and sanctified. If you are ready for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all you need to do is ask and God will change you. The Holy Ghost will come inside of you and empowerment will come. Why will the empowerment come? I believe in the last days that the greatest days are before us because the empowerment of the Holy Ghost is going to anoint us to be witnesses, effective witnesses. I believe that he's going to uh, rekindle a fire that we once had as our forefathers once had. You see, because we're living in the age of humanism and rationalism and skepticism and God is demonstrating his mighty power by filling people with the Holy Ghost. He's showing with the evidence of speaking in other tongues that the Spirit, as the Spirit gives the utterance, you see, he's showing us that the days of miracles are not over for the church is, is still alive and God is still moving mightily among his people. Again, before I leave this thought behind, again, before Pentecost, the disciples were timid, but after... Acts 2, Peter preaches 3,000 are saved. What an anointing. Acts 4 and 13, Peter and John stood with boldness rather in uh, obeying God than obeying man. Acts 7, Stephen boldly stood up to the Jewish Sanhedrin with stones in their hand. Acts 26, Paul faced Caesar's Roman court with boldness. Listen to me. It was neither imprisonment it was neither pain nor threat of death could cool the fire, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost boldness that burned within the apostles. So I want to ask you this today. What about you? Have you been empowered from on high? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? You say, well, preacher, we ain't in church. We can lay hands. You don't have to have me to lay hands on. That is, that, is the, that is one of the, I guess, one of the misconstrued uh, things that people do. I think it's one of these things that, that, that people put too much pressure and too much thought on man rather than realizing that, that it is God. Jesus is the Holy Ghost baptizer. If you're a mama in there right now sitting in your living room, if you're a daddy filled with the Holy Ghost, you can lay hands on your children. I believe my wife is sitting here. I was you were 9 or 11. She was 11 years old when she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, preach Jesus to them. Tell them about the Holy Ghost and God will fill them. Let me ask you this. Have you felt lately like you've lost your boldness? Maybe perhaps you, you're not the witnesser that you used to be. I want to tell you, you can ask God right there, right now. Ask the Holy Ghost to refill you, come back inside of you, empower you, rekindle the fire. Give that intense joy, that boldness, that faithfulness that you once had. And last of all, when a hundred believers gathered in 1896 at Cher Schoolhouse, in the hills of North Carolina and Tennessee. They prayed and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and every believer became an evangelist. I want to tell you today, there's something 
listen to me, if you hadn't listened to it, there's something happening. There's something happening in the spiritual realm. God is, I feel the Holy Ghost running up and down my soul. There's something happening in the spiritual realm that hasn't happened before. And God is fixing to turn something loose on the earth. And I'm going to tell you what is happening. The spirit is moving. The field is being set. God is about to release an anointing and a power through the Holy Ghost that we have never witnessed before. The revivals of old will not compare with what God is about to do. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have preached what you would have me to say. I truly believe and I receive, Lord, the empowerment to make me a better preacher, to make me a better teacher, to make me a better pastor, make me a better leader. But Lord, I am set on goal. Hallelujah. I am ready that when you say it's time and you release the anointing and you release the empowerment that only comes through the Holy Ghost and our lives will be forever changed, that souls will be saved, miracles and signs and wonders. Oh, let it be so, Lord. Let it be so. But let it start today in the hearts and the lives of every believer that will watch this video. Let it start in their lives today. Right there in their living rooms, even out on the front porch, wherever they're watching. Lord, let it start today inside of them. If they would ask, they will receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Georgetown Church of God, for your faithfulness. I applaud you for those of you that are viewing and watching, whether you're a part of us as a, as a church here, as a church body, or you're a friend of mine, or you're somebody that I've pastored before, we appreciate you uh, watching the videos. I pray that you get something out. I encourage you. You know, I'm not one of these preachers say, watch me and watch nobody else. I don't care. If you're getting the word of God, if you're hearing the word of God, you watch as many preachers preach as you want to watch. Because we want you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We want you to be filled with God's word to bring you through this pandemic. Because God is for us, not against us. God bless you. See you tonight at 6. Amen.